Okay, what is the standard form of a quadratic equation? Because y'all should know that. AX squared plus BX plus C. AX squared plus BX plus C. And since it says equation, technically it's set equal to zero. Y'all should be comfortable with that. We've been seeing it for a long while. All right, so like linear equations, quadratic equations can be solved to determine, thank you, um, to determine the values of x that make the equation true. They want us to use the real world example below to explore solving quadratic equations using the graph. All right, so Isaiah punts a football, so this is one of those projectile motion problems. We've seen those kind of a lot. Um, the path of the ball can be re represented by this function right here, negative one over 10 x squared plus four x, where x is the horizontal distance of the ball and y is the height of my ball. All right, so it says using the graph, determine how many yards the ball is from Isaiah when it hits the ground. So here's Isaiah over here, he kicks it right here. How far is it from him when he hits the ground? 40 yards. What did you say, John? 40 yards. 40 yards. Okay, so Isaiah is standing at where? Zero. Zero. So Isaiah is at zero and it lands at 40 yards. Those are the zeros. Those are the solutions. The ball traveled 40 yards. Everybody okay with that? How would I write the domain of that? Um, zero is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 40. Good. Uh, so far when I was grading those, I think I only saw one paper where somebody missed up. All right, so another way to find the solutions above would be to set y, the height of the ball equal to, um, I'm not going to read this, sorry, it says for your solutions, equal to zero, sorry, I had to read what this said, um, and then we would solve the equation, so what we're going to do is we're going to take that and set that equal to zero, all right, so if we are solving this equation, then I could um, take and plug in that zero because that's going to be my x value, so I would have negative one over 10 times zero squared plus four times zero, which is gonna give you what? Mm -hmm. We ended up with zero there, right? Because everything gets multiplied, we get zero? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. The other way that we could prove that is I could plug in my 40 right here. So I would have negative one over 10 times 40 squared plus four times 40, and if I plug that in, what do you get? Plug it in your calculator and come get What'd you get when you plug it in? Zero. You get zero. All right, which should be, should make sense because I plugged in zero here and the y value there, or I plugged in 40 and the y value is zero. If I plug in zero, the y value is zero. So I can prove that. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So this says discuss some of the limitations of solving quadratic equations using the graph. Um, so let's say that I kicked this ball and it doesn't land right at 40. So I want you to think about some of those graphs we said we're going to ask you about the zeros and the solutions. What could be a problem if I only, if the only thing I knew to do was look at the graph? What could be my problem there? You might get a distinct link. Say that again. You might have like a distinct link. Yeah, sometimes it's not a nice number. Does that make sense? And I can't clearly see it. Is that logical to y'all? It's just like yesterday when we talked about that A value. If this wasn't a one and one right here, I don't know that A value just by looking at it, right? So that means I had to go calculate it. The same thing is here. If it doesn't cross at a nice place, then I don't know what it is. 
So that can be an issue. So sometimes solutions are not easily seen on graph. Or you graph it in your calculator and you can't see it on the screen because it's outside your view and if y'all don't know how to adjust that and go find it, that makes it a little bit difficult for you. So there's that issue. All right, so one of the ways to solve, and there are several, one of the ways to solve is by factoring. We have already done factoring this year, but we're doing it again. So if you forgot how, and there was a question about it on your journal quiz, if you forgot how, we're about to go over it. So it says, is it necessary? We would need to write it in our standard form, which is ax squared plus bx plus c. So sometimes it may be in that vertex form. You know what I'm talking about, that vertex form, a x minus h squared plus c. If it's in, uh, or plus k, if it's in that form, I'm gonna have to multiply that out and change it to standard form. I cannot factor it from vertex form. I have to be in standard form. Is everybody okay there? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. So then it says use the zero product property and set each factor equal to zero. I'll show you what I'm talking about there in just a minute. All right, so this says um, if A times B is equal to zero, so I had two numbers, I'm multiplying them together and A equals zero then that means one of the numbers had to be what? If I multiply two numbers together and I get zero, one of them had to be what? Uh, zero. One of them had to be zero. So either A is equal to zero or B is equal to zero. I don't know which one, but one of them could be equal to zero. Everybody okay for, with that? Okay. All right, and we're gonna solve for X. So we'll kind of take a look at what we're doing. We've been factoring before, all right? So I am in standard form, right? That's the first thing. Okay, then to decide if I can go straight to my parentheses, where do I look? Because um, this isn't new. We've already done this, and you uh, cannot forget it. It's literally the most important thing. The A. I've got to look at the A value. What is my A value here, my leading coefficient? It's one. It's one. So if my A value is one, can I split? Yes. Okay, what if my A value is not one? Slip and slide. Yeah, then I'm gonna have to slip and slide. So I have something that looks like this. X squared splits to be? Uh, X. X and X. How do I know what my signs are in here? How do I determine the signs inside my parentheses? Have, like, where do I look first? The C. I look at my C value. What am I looking at here? It's a negative. What does that negative in the C value tell me? That I'm gonna have two different signs inside my parentheses. Does that make sense? So one of these is positive and one of these is negative. Then I'm looking for two numbers that what? Multiply to get I got good. I need two numbers that multiply together and give me negative ten. Add to get three. Yeah, and add up or subtract to to three. Does that make sense? Okay, will it, will they add together or will they end up being subtracting here? Subtracting. Subtracting why? Because the ten is negative. Subtracting why? Because the subtracting why? Because the ten is negative. Yeah, because one of my signs is negative. So if one of my signs is negative, I'm gonna have to subtract it from the other one, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So what are my two numbers that multiply to ten and will give me three? Two and five. Huh? Two and five. Two and five. How do I know which one goes where? Sergio, how do I know which one goes here and which one goes here? Uh, the, bigger the bigger number gets what? Uh, okay, why? The because the B. So C tells me whether my signs are the same or different. B tells me if the signs are the same, then there whatever B is, if the signs are different, then my bigger number is what B is. So I need both C and B to make that determination. Is everybody okay there? Yes, sir. All right, so five goes here and two goes here. So right here, this is kind of as far as y'all have gone, right? Like we've done factoring. 
How did I teach you to check and make sure that what you factored is in fact the exact same equation as the one you started with? Plug it into your calculator and they should trace over each other. I don't know why some of y'all chose not to do that on your test yesterday. Like I, I gave y'all all the tricks on how to check, let your calculator help you. Some of you still don't do that, which is shame on you. Okay, so now that I have my factors, now I am going to solve them, okay? So in order to solve them, I'm going to take each of my factors and set them equal to zero. So I'm going to split this in half, and I'm going to have x plus 5 is equal to zero, and x minus 2 is equal to zero. And now I'm going to solve for x. So what do I do right here to solve for x? I'm going to subtract 5. I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides, which I'm going to mean, which means I'm going to get x is equal to what? Negative 5. Negative 5. Okay, here I'm going to do the same thing. I need to solve for x, so I need to do what, Casey? Um, add the two. I'm going to add the 2. So that cancels, and x is equal to 2, right? Yes, so I got x is equal to negative 5 and positive 2. Most of the time, like we write these numerically, like the smaller one on the left, the bigger one on the right, um, that's the correct way to write it. That's how they'll be written on a test. As long as you have them both, that's what I'm super concerned about. So these are the solutions, right? Mm -hmm. What's our, what are my other words for solutions? X-intercepts. X-intercepts. Roots. Roots and zeros. zeros. Everybody okay there? All right, so what does that mean when I'm talking about a quadratic? If, if I'm saying that my zeros are negative five and two, what does that mean about the graph? That it's going. Well, Say that louder. So it has two zeros. Well, well, yeah, it has two zeros. What are they? Negative five and two. Negative five and two. So if I'm looking at my graph, how do I know if I did it right? Um, go through tail. Yeah, it goes through on my graph at negative five and two. So can I check my answer? Yes. Yes. Is everybody okay with that? Does that make sense? Yes, sir. All right. So it's just like yesterday when you were on your um, on your test, and I can't remember if there was one on there. I think there was one that they gave you the graph, and all they did was ask you for the zeros, and all you had to do is look at the graph, right? Like you know what they are. Here, I'm not saying you can't just look at the graph. You're going to have to solve it and prove it, but you can check your answer. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, the next one. I have my quadratic. Is it in standard form? Uh, yes. Okay. I do not have an A value of one, right? What do I need to do first here? Um. Cause I don't have a C, so this looks a little bit different. What can I do here? Um. What should I always do first when I'm factoring? See if it can be. See if it has a square root. Common factor. All right, have, very good. Have, like I can check and see is there a greatest common factor? Is there a greatest common? Is there a GCF here that can be taken out? Yes. Yes. If my A value is not one, I need to be sure I'm checking for that. What can come out of that? Five. Five. That is not the GCF. Yes, five can come out, but it is not the GCF. Look closer. Because again, this is the first time I'm teaching this, so like I'm not giving it to you. 5x. I can take out 5x. Guys, if y'all don't take out the x, you won't be able to do this. You won't know how to solve it. All right, so I can take out 5x. So when I take out 5x, what's left right here? X. X. What's left right here? 3. So I have x plus 3 is equal to 0. I'm still doing the same thing. I'm going to cut this in half. My first one, I have 5x is equal to 0. My second half is x plus 3 is equal to 0. How do I solve for x right here? Divide by 5. Divide by 5, okay. Which means x is equal to? What's 0 divided by 5? 0. 0, all right. What's going to happen over here? 
Let's make that. I'm going to subtract 3, and I'm going to get x is equal to negative 3. Negative 3. Are we okay there? Okay. So then my solutions are going to be negative 3 and 0, which means that's where my graph crosses the x-axis. Are we okay there? Yes. I could graph it and check it. If I had only taken the 5 out here, I would have had x squared plus 3, which I can't, or sorry, I would have had, yeah, I would have had x squared plus 3x, which I can't factor. Does that make sense? You can't solve that, but there's two x's in there. All right. Number four. My leading coefficient is? Um, 1. Louder. 1. My leading coefficient is 1. Can I split it? Um, yeah. Okay. So here is my split. I've got x and I've got x. Okay. What are my signs going to be, Chewy? Same or different? Same. Same. Okay. Because? Because what's positive? The C value, which is 12. C is positive. Okay. So they are the same. They are both positive. Why do I know they're both positive? Go ahead. Huh? Because of my B7, which is also positive. Everybody okay there? So I'm looking for two numbers that do what, Dalen? Uh, add subtotals and multiply 12. Good. Add 7 and multiply to 12. What are my two numbers? 4 and 3. 4 and 3. Okay. So then I will split that and I will have X plus 3 is equal to 0 and X plus 4 is equal to 0. And I will subtract that over. And I'll get negative 3, and I'll subtract that over, and I will get negative 4. So my zeros are x is equal to negative 4 and negative 3, and I can graph that and check and see that that works. Are we okay there? Okay, so down here at the bottom, I a lot of times don't do this part, but I want to here. Um, but we're not using the graphing calculator. Actually, we're not doing this. We're going to write something else down here. I don't care what that says. We're going to write something else down here. So I don't need that part. I need to go in and take it off. Okay, so I want you to look at these each time and, and, and look at what is what I have when I have my factors. This one's a little bit different. But when I look at these, what can you see if I have a factor like x plus 5? And then its solution ends up being x, x equals negative 5. What happens every time when I go from my factor to my solution? The sign flips. So that is just like, so y'all remember when we were doing vertex form and I had x minus h, right? And whatever it was in the parentheses always changed signs because we set it equal to 0. And when I was showing you that, I said this will make a whole lot of sense when we get to factoring because here it is, like we're there. So if I know what my factor is, the factor is what is inside the parentheses, okay? That is the factor. The solution is what happens when I set my factor equal to zero. Is everybody okay with the difference in the two things? Because sometimes they're asking you about factors and sometimes they're asking you about solutions and you have to make sure you know the difference in the two. But the different, like how, what you're gonna know is that the signs will be the opposite. So if I know the solution is, say, negative 6, then what would the factor be? So how would I write it? No, not x equals 6. Huh? I'd write it as x plus 6, and it has to be in the parentheses if it's a factor. Is everybody okay with that? Okay, now what happened, and, and number three is the only one that we have that, if I have to pull out a GCF out front and it has an X, what's always going to happen right there? Division. Say that again? Division. Yeah, which means I'm going to be dividing, but I'm going to end up getting what every single time? Somebody over there, one of my boys said it. What am I going to get every time? Come on, y'all. This is why y'all end up having to come back all the time. Zero. I'm going to get zero because I'm going to have something x equals zero, and it doesn't matter 
what that number is, when I do zero divided by anything, I'm still going to get zero. Guys, we have to include that. That is one of the solutions. It doesn't just go away. Is everybody okay there? All right, so I have to set anything that has an X with it equal to zero. All good? Yes. Okay, we're going to write this. Linear uh, factors. and solutions will always have opposite signs. So the way that you kind of think about that, and I don't love using letters, but if I have, oh, I'm going to use numbers. If I have x plus 9 as my factor, then the solution is going to be what? Uh, negative 9. Negative 9. If I had x minus 7 as a factor, what would the solution be? Seven. Positive 7. Are we okay with, there, with that? Yes, sir. Okay, the other thing is if I have um, AX is equal to zero, then that means X is going to equal to zero. It does not matter what A is. Is that logical to y'all? Yes, if you know those things, you save yourself a lot of work sometimes. Is everybody good? Yes, sir. All right, questions at all so far? All right, so this one right here, it says the graph at the right shows this function 2x squared minus 3x minus 9. What do we see about the solutions there when I just look at the graph? They're not exact. They're not necessarily nice. This happens pretty frequently. Okay, so it says using the graph, estimate the zeros. So what do you think this one is over here, roughly? Yeah, it looks like it could be negative one and one half, or negative three over two, which is how I would want you to write it. Are we okay there? Yes, sir. The other one looks like it's what? Uh, three. It looks like it's at three. So that's where I think it is. Can graphs sometimes be deceiving? Yes, sir. Okay, so I need to know that I know that I know that that's what it is. So I'm going to factor this. All right. So I've got 2x squared minus 3x minus 9. And guys, if you don't remember factoring very well and you're struggling with this, you need to go back and look over your notes on factoring. When I told y'all that it is literally the single most important thing that I teach you in Algebra 1, I am not joking. We factor from day 1 in Algebra 2 and pre-cal and we factor all year in every single unit that we cover. So you have to be able to factor. All right, this one right here. What is my A value? Two. Two. So can I split if I have a two out front? No. No, so then I'm looking to see if I possibly have what? What am I looking for next? The greatest common factor. Huh? The greatest common factor. I'm looking to see, do I have a GCF? Can I get rid of the two? Can I do that in this problem? No. I can't pull it out. So since I can't take it out, what is my only option here? Slip and slide. That's our option, is your slip and slide there. So when I do slip and slide, what does that mean? What's my first step, Parker? Do you remember? What about you, Dalen? Do you remember what the first step is for slip and slide? Adam? Slip. Okay, which is doing what? Um, aren't you like mm -hmm. putting the two, multiplying the two? Yep, nine? I'm going to multiply two times nine. So that's my slip part. So that gives me x squared minus 3x minus 18. Now I can split it because I have a 1 here. Is everybody okay there? Yes, sir. Okay, so I've got that. Sign's going to be same or different, Bryson? Mm -hmm. Why? Could be. Okay. 
So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to what, Bryson? 18. Okay, and I'm, am I going to add those two numbers together or am I going to subtract them in this problem? I'm going to subtract them because the signs are different, all right? So I'm going to subtract them and I need to get what? Three. Three, okay, so yes. And my two numbers are three and six. Which one goes where? Six is going to be negative. Why is six negative? Because B is negative and B gets the bigger sign. Okay, so I get this. Are those my answers? Okay, so now what do I need to do then to figure out my answer? Because this is a step sometimes we forget. Dalen? We've got to divide out the two. So you remember we did the slip. Now we got to do the slide. So that means I've got to divide out my two here. All right, so I've got that. Yes? What happens? Can I simplify this fraction right here? No. No, so if I'm writing the factor, that factor needs to be what happens here? Uh, the two moves up to the x. Yeah, the two slides over there, so that gives me 2x plus 3. What happens here? Uh, it simplifies to 3. Yeah, 6 divides by 2, and I get 3. Guys, if you're not sure if this fraction simplifies, alpha y equals it. We'll give it to you. So that simplifies and gives me 3, so I just have x minus 3. So those are my two factors. So if I know my factors, now I can go find my solutions. So to find my solutions, what did I have to do with each factor? Set them equal to 0. So 2x plus 3 equals 0, and x minus 3 equals 0. So here, what do I need to do? Subtract 3. So I have 2x is equal to negative 3. Now, divide by 2. So I get x is equal to negative 3 over 2. What happens with this one? You add 3. I would add 3. And I get x is equal to positive 3. Does it match what my graph looks like? what we thought it would be. Yes. yes, and if I go in and I graph my original function, this right here in y equals in y1, and I go graph this one right here in y2, I know I factored it correctly. So x is equal to negative 3 over 2 and 3. And y'all know how I am. I want these in fraction form, even if it's improper. They're right okay there. Now here, if you notice back all the way go, all the way back over here, this was a positive three over two. We already talked about the signs are going to be the opposite. So the opposite of positive three over two is negative three over two, and this became a minus three, which means that became a positive three. Is everybody okay there? Yes. All right, number six. I don't even know how you say that person's name. Found the factors of a quadratic function to be x plus three and x minus five. What does that mean about the zeros? So what will the zeros be? Negative, What's three. negative three and positive five. positive five. Is everybody okay with that? Yes, so x will be negative three and positive five. Any questions on why that is? Okay, if you have a single x plus or minus a number, I'm okay if you just drop this underneath there. Like I'm okay that you don't work that out. Now, when you have something like this that has a value in front of x, I need you to make sure you show that work because sometimes you'll mess it up. Everybody okay? Yes. All right. Number seven. They want us to factor this. What do I need to do here? Uh, ben, what do I need to do first? Okay. What else do I need to do here? You're missing something. Look at that problem really carefully. It's got to be equal to zero. Is everybody okay with that? Must be equal to zero. And it's not equal to zero, which means I need to do what? How do I get it equal to zero? Well, what's keeping it from being equal to zero? The 14. The 14. So what do I need to do? 
I need to subtract it. So I need to subtract that 14. So now I've got x squared plus 5x minus 14 is equal to zero. Now I can factor it. I cannot factor it if it is not equal to zero. I've got to do that first. Is everybody okay there? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, so now I'm gonna kind of go back and see what Ben said. I'm checking to see do I have a leading coefficient of one? I do, so that means I can go ahead and split here. What are my signs gonna be, Parker? Same or different? Different. Okay, so x plus and x minus, and I don't care what order you write them in, makes no difference to me. All right, so I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to what, Parker? Uh, 14. And am I gonna add them or subtract them? subtract them because the signs are different. All right, so what are my two numbers? Seven and two. Seven and two, and which one's positive and which one's negative? Seven's positive, two okay. negative. Good, why is the seven positive? It's the bigger number. Yep, because B is positive, it tells me my bigger number has that sign, okay? So this is gonna end up being what? So these are my factors. Now I want the solutions. What's this solution going to end up being? Negative seven. Negative seven. What's this one going to end up being? Positive two. Positive two. Is everybody okay with looking at your factors and knowing that the signs are going to be the opposite of that? Yes? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so x then must equal negative seven and positive two. How could I check that and make sure that I did it right? Graph it. Graph it, and it'll cross at negative seven and positive two. If it doesn't, something's wrong. Are we okay there? Yes, Almost all of what we can do with quadratics is graph it to check it. All right, what about number eight? John, what do I need to do first? Uh, add five because there is a zero. Very good. Two x squared plus 11x plus five is now equal to zero. Okay, now what am I looking for, John? Uh, is there Okay, can, is there one that I could take out? Because you're absolutely right, that's what I would look for next. Uh, no. There is not, so since I can't take out a GCF, what then am I gonna have to do here since my leading coefficient isn't one? Slip and slide. I'm gonna have to do my slip and slide, so I gotta multiply that back there. So that's gonna give me x squared plus 11x plus 10 is equal to zero. Now I can split. What will my signs be here? Um, Dalen, what are my signs gonna be? Both positive, why? Good, my sign C is positive. All right, so I'm looking for two numbers that multiply together and give me what, Casey? Uh, <coughs> get two. Okay, and? So, equal and? so what are my two numbers? Too terribly many options for 10. Oh, oh. Yeah, one and 10. A lot of times y'all forget about one in itself. Like, but that one is, it is still two numbers multiplying. Give me that. So y'all don't, don't forget about that one because that one sometimes happens. All right, so I got one and 10. Are those my solutions? Are those my factors? Those are not my factors. What do I need to do now? I got to divide my two out. All right, so I'm gonna divide my two out. Now we're gonna go ahead and write our factors from here, but what solution is this gonna end up being right here? Negative one half. Negative one half. What's this one gonna be? Negative five. Negative five. We're gonna go ahead, I want you to rewrite the factors because y'all need practice doing that, okay? So my factors then, because this is gonna push up there, are gonna be two X plus one and X plus five. I do want you rewriting the factors on your assignment also, okay? Like I want you doing that because it's so, so important that we're able to do factors. Now, we already know this is gonna be a negative one half. If I solve that out, here's why. So I get the half there. This one, I'm okay if you go straight to there. And if I graph that, I'll be able to see them. Is everybody okay with that? Yes, Any questions so far? Or are, are we remembering factoring now? Yes, Okay, please don't forget factoring. 
Okay. Mrs. Cuthbert asked her students to find the zeros of the function x squared minus 225. Georgia claims the functions will have only one zero at 15. Do you agree or do you disagree? Okay, so let's think about this. What will this graph look like? If it is x squared minus 225. It's going to go up or go down. It's going to go down. So if I'm thinking about my x squared, my vertex is at 0, 0, right? Mm -hmm. And now my graph just went down a whole bunch. Yes? Mm -hmm. It went way down on the y-axis. And it's going to point which direction? Up. up. How many solutions should it have? Uh, two. Two. Did I have to graph that to be able to answer that question? No. No. Because if you graphed it on your calculator, you wouldn't be able to see the graph. Like, I can tell you that right now. You wouldn't be able to see it. Okay, but what I know is if I graphed that on my axis line, this would be way down here, and it would go up, which would mean it would have two solutions. Sometimes I don't have to do the graph. I can just do this. I talked about that when I was reviewing with y'all yesterday. Okay, so we agree or disagree? Disagree. Disagree. There will be how many? Will be two solutions. Are we okay there? Yes, sir. All right. X squared minus two twenty-five is a special quadratic. It does not have a b value. All right. So let's go back and think. When we are factoring, we have a, b, and c. I multiply two numbers to get c. Right. And then I add or subtract to get B, right? My C value has what sign here? A negative. It's a negative sign, which means my two factors are different, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so they have different signs. What, how can I add two numbers together and get zero? They're, they're the same number, but opposite. Same opposite. number, but opposite sign, right? Okay. So I know I can do this, and this is x and x, and I know my signs are opposites because 225 is negative, right? So what I got to do is figure out what number that I would multiply times its negative, so times itself, and give me 225, which you should all know. You should know all these because I made you learn them. So what number times itself gives me 225? 15 is my answer. Are we okay there? Yes. So this is 15 and this is 15, which means this solution becomes negative 15. Negative 15 and this solution becomes positive 15. positive 15. Can anybody tell me what this thing is called? It's a difference of squares. Well, it was a special one. I was wondering around what it's just right. Difference of squares. Yep, it is a difference of squares. It is a special one. All right, it's a difference of squares. So if I'm writing my solutions here, since these are the same, I can write that both positive and negative 15, which is why I said it wouldn't show up on your graph because your calculator graph is a 10-10 graph and you wouldn't be able to see it on the window. You wouldn't be able to see the vertex either because it's way down there at negative 225. Does that make sense? So you'd graph it and you'd come over here and say, I can't even see it. Well, that's why. Everybody okay there? I can also check on my table at negative 15, my y value is going to be 0. And at positive 15, my y value is going to be also 0. Is everybody okay with being able to check that on your table? Yes, sir. yes or no? Okay, I can check every one of these. If I graph this, if I go over the table at negative 3, the y value is going to be 0 because that's where it's crossing. Well, that's not the same problem, but y'all see what I'm saying? At positive 5, my y value would be zero because it crosses the axis line and at the axis line y is zero. Is everybody okay with that? Yes. All right. Farmer Dan uses a sprinkler to water his field. It makes a shape of a parabola. Looks like this equation right here where y represents the height of the water in feet and x is the horizontal distance of the water stream. Use the equation to find the horizontal distance the sprinkler can cover. All right. So the first thing I need to do is find out how far one section is, which means I'm going to have to factor that. So 
What can I do first? I'm going to write my equation down here. Negative 0.05x squared plus 6x is all equal to 0. All right, first thing I always look for is what? Um, the leading coefficient. I'm looking at my leading coefficient. Is it 1? No. No. So it's not 1. So then the next thing I'm looking for is what? Greatest common factor. A greatest common factor. So what do I need to get out of here? What do I need to go away? Uh, 0.05. Yeah, negative 0 0.05, right? Mm -hmm. I can take negative 0 0.05 out of 6. Is everybody okay that I can do mm -hmm. that? I can divide that out, okay? Is that my GCF? Um, no. No, it is not. And I'm going to kind of go back. What else can I take out? The X. The X. If I don't have a C value, I need to get rid of this X here. Okay, the other thing that I want to remind you is if I have a negative out front, I need to take it out and get rid of it, okay? So I'm going to divide both of these by negative 0.05x. The negative is the problem, but the x really is the problem. We'll deal with that. So negative 0.05 divided by negative 0.05 leaves me with x, x minus 120. Minus what? 120. 120. So y'all went in your calculator and you did 6 divided by negative 0.05. Is everybody okay there? Yes, ma'am. All right. So this solution is going to end up being what? Because um, I have negative 0.05x is equal to 0. It'd be 0. This is going to end up being x equals 0. Are we okay there? Yes, ma'am. What is this one going to end up being? Uh, positive 1, 10, 10, 10. Okay, this one's going to be positive 120. All right, this line's my way right here. All right, so let's talk about this problem. So let's think about this. I've got this sprinkler. Okay, so here's my sprinkler right here, and it's spraying all the way around. Yes, I think it actually only goes halfway, but whatever. Okay, so what does this spot in my problem represent? Well, in the graph, it's my origin, yet. Yeah, but what does this spot represent in this problem? Where it starts. So what's there? Yes. The sprinkler. Does that make sense? So this is the location of my sprinkler. Mm -hmm. How far does it go out? 120. It hits 120. Is everybody okay with that? That it goes out and it hits 120? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so this is right here. This is the location of the sprinkler. Because sometimes these problems ask you, the big thing is like, interpret what this means. Y'all seen that, right? Interpret the meaning of this. Interpret the meaning of that. The meaning of that is that that is where the sprinkler is. Does that make sense? Yes, ma'am. All right, this is right here. This is where the water hits the ground. Y'all are going to come back. The boys, y'all are going to come back six period. That's where it hits the ground. Is everybody okay with that? Yes, sir. So how far out does my sprinkler spray? 120 feet. Okay, sprays out or sprays 120 feet. Everybody okay there? That is your answer to that problem because that's what it asks you, how far it goes. Now, what if this sprinkler, instead of just being a parabola, what if it was circular and it went all the way around? Circumference. Then how far out would my sprinkler go? 240 because from my sprinkler it would do 120 that direction and 120 that direction. Does that make sense? So be careful because sometimes I've seen problems that do that. 